The following is a live presentation of CBC Sports. You got a taste of it. In 2020, Japan will host the Summer Olympics for the second time in Tokyo. Today, it's the bridge between winter and summer sport as we go to the ice and to the turf in this Asian colossus. The CBC Broadcasting Center at Front and John in Toronto on a holiday Sunday as we share sport on Easter and at Passover. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the show for Sunday, April 21st, 2019. I'm Scott Russell. I hope you're enjoying a peaceful day. Sport, however, and never sleeps. And in about two hours' time, we've got HSBC World Rugby 7 Series. The women are playing on the southernmost island of Japan at Kyushu. On the, also on that island is the city of Fukuoka. And it's the site of the final event of the ISU World Figure Skating Season. It's World Team Trophy, the top six nations in the world. And there are eight skaters per nation, two men, two women, a pair's team and an ice dance team and after two disciplines here is the Canadian story the veterans Kaylin Weaver Andrew Poget the ice dancers wound up fourth they helped Canada win silver in 2013 the two men Keegan Messing was fourth Nam Nguyen the two-time national champion finished seventh and so today the women in pairs skate the free programs and we'll begin with the pairs Canada represented by Kirsten Moore Towers Michael Marinero they're the reigning national champions and four continent silver medalists Kirsten helped Canada to win silver in the team event at the Sochi 2014 Olympics. After the short program here, they're fourth and hope to improve on that to help the Canadian medal chances. Here's how it stands after the ice dance and the men's skating. USA first with 91. They're the three-time champions. Japan is next, followed by Russia. The Canadians have moved up to fourth position with 59 points. Canada hoping to catch a medal for the fourth time at World Team Trophy. Right now, let's get to the rink in Fukuoka for the pairs free skate with Brenda Irving, four-time world champion Kurt Browning, and Olympic coach Carol Lane. Thanks, Scott. Well, the pairs are warming up for today's free skate. And as you said, Krista Moore Towers, Michael Marinero are Canada's number one team. And Kurt and Carol, they made several relatively small errors, which left them in fourth place in the short, giving Canada nine out of a possible 12 points. Yeah, with 12 competitors, I mean, sorry, it's ranking, basically very simple format. You get uh, how many points you earn, and then after the short program, it's clean, clean slate, so we start fresh with the long program and try and get, again, as many points as you can for your country. It's kind of exciting. It's a little bit freeing, too. Normally, your short program and long program are tied together, and you know if you've had a bad short that the long is so critical, but now you can just throw that short away and yep. start again. Unless you win it, then you go, oh, darn, I wish that kept going. Yeah, over. now I've got to keep it. <laughs> <laughs> so as Scott said, Team Canada, Team France sit fourth and fifth respectively in the standings, just five points apart, and Vanessa James, Morgan Seapris could help uh, the French close that gap a little bit here. And here's uh, the Russian team of Natalia Zabayako and Alexander Embart, the reigning world bronze medalist, and they scored a personal best in the short the other day day and won the short ahead of James and Cephas. Well, Team Russia did qualify in first place going into this event, and uh, this is one of the reasons why this is the, there's such a, a great group of talent in Russia, especially in pair. They have a long lineage of good skaters. This is the team that's burst through and is surviving after the Olympics. That's right. Here's a look at the order of go today. The Russians are nine points back of second place Japanese uh, with two events left to go. Russia still has a chance to catch them, though, especially considering that Japan does not have a top shelf pairs team yet. Uh, the Japanese team struggled with their jumps in the short, finishing in last place. Now we're going to start our coverage with 
the Canadians. More towers in Marinero. They were surprised as anyone when they found out last summer. They were going to start the season off as Canada's number one Paris team. Retirements and new partnerships were the reason for that. And it did take Kirsten and Michael some time to deal with the pressure of being that number one team. a bit of a veteran when it comes to competition. Not getting a lot of height on the twist there. If you watch some of the, particularly the Russian teams, you'll see how much elevation the girl gets in the air, enabling the boy to have a clean catch coming out. Not quite as good as they would have liked. GOE in the negative, you can see in the top corner, nice side-by-side -side jumps. Good for you, Michael, who had trouble this season. Nailing those jumps. Kind of almost get a little bit of a redemption. Whatever went wrong at Worlds, World Team Trophy, I'm gonna go fix it. event a lot of the teams will have very similar planned elements and you can see the GOE the grade of execution if you can get bonus marks on those elements that's the make or break in this event you can see a nice 1.43 added on it's all about addition you don't want any subtraction and if you like to follow the scoring the C that you see at the bottom stands for the current skater that shows the levels that the technical panel are assigning to each element, followed by the grade of execution from the judging panel. And then you're also seeing whoever's in first place at the moment, and you can see how close these guys are to catching that score as they move through the program. get his feet unraveled on the exit of that jump. It's like a timing from the takeoff tells your brain everything's okay. When you don't have that exact timing, you have a little alarm that goes off and 0 0.5, 0 0.6 seconds later, you're not right where you want to be to fix it. It's not a lot of time to make a correction, is it? Not really. I think one area where Kirsten and Michael have shown huge improvement is with their lifts. Um, when they started their career together, sometimes the lifts was a bit sketchy. They had some failures to launch, but now Michael looks so secure in his position, and Kirsten has that look of trust that every pair girl needs in spades. I love that fist pump. Bittersweet for these skaters. It is the end of the uh, competitive season. And if you really love your program, you kind of don't want to say goodbye to it. Other skaters would be like, I can deal with not skating that anymore because the music, you hear it every day for a whole year. Pink Floyd, I could live with that. Imagine Torval and Dean listening to Bolero for 30 years. That must have been quite, quite a feat. It pays the bills. It does. Their short program did not live up to their expectations, and I'm sure that's a little more like it. What they wanted to see, the Canadian champions, Krista Moore Towers and Michael Marinero, end their season with a solid free skate.
it's fun to watch people compete with program that they know that they believe in. And this, this team always looks like they're having fun. It might be a mistake or two. They don't seem to care. I think he'll be kicking yeah. himself on that triple toe because he really looked like he had it. And then it's like there was a momentary lapse of, of concentration and it, and it just disappeared on him. But boy, these guys have improved. Wow. A team. It is a team <laughs> event. You got to remember, yeah. you are kind of hanging on <laughs> for everybody. It's a team event, and where there's money to be won, I believe. If uh, the internet, if I did this right, it's like two hundred thousand dollars for the winning team, and then it drops to one hundred seventy thousand for the second place team, and then ten grand less oh, all the way down. So pretty nice payday. Yeah. So when you screw up, that's money out of your friend's <laughs> pocket. <laughs> the pressure's really on. Kind of. It's a long bus ride back to the hotel. Fist pump. Going to miss that. Kirsten's so solid on the landings of the throws. She impresses me so much. The body is so still, but so organized. She doesn't just land the jumps. She kind of shows them off. Oh, she does. Yeah, yeah. she really does. Puts a bow on it. What do you think is the next thing that this team has to tackle? I mean, right away, it's just consistency in the yeah. jumps. Um, uh, and it's basically, I hate to do it, you know, point fingers, but it's Michael. So, and he's got great technique. So we just gotta keep building and maybe next year, take that equation out of it and watch the scores, you know, just creep up five, yeah. six points at yeah. least. Yeah. Yeah. They finished a fourth in the short the other day. They'd like to improve on that now. That's... That's a good start at 131.84. It gives them the lead for the moment. And this is the team that finished ahead of them in the short. Nicole Della Monica and Matteo Grise were ranked outside the top 15 for most of their careers, but this Italian team broke into the top 10 for the first time two seasons ago. And really, Italy as a skating power has also seen a resurgence. Heading into this competition, a lot of people thought Team Italy could take a run at the podium. They certainly at one point during the Olympics looked like they could be in line to pull off an upset bronze medal. Well, you've got to be pretty strong in all the disciplines to have the chance to get on the podium. So if you have a little weak spot somewhere, that, that makes your job way harder. Starting with beautiful quality on the side by side triple sock house. Triple twist. Again, very clean. Nice height there from Nicole. This kind of format, this team format, really inspires federations around the world to try to improve where their weaknesses are. If they've got a couple of superstars. In the singles event, for example, they think if we could just develop our dance, develop our Paris a little bit stronger, we could have a shot at an Olympic medal. Yep. It was Matteo Guarisi who was involved in the collision on the warm up at Worlds with the French pair skater Vanessa James and as you can see, he's a, a very big lad, and he said he did everything he could to try not to hit her because she was so tiny. But um, collisions often happen in places you don't expect, not during the big tricks, but when somebody is just stepping out from the boards or coming into doing something. Yeah. It's such a random thing. Oh, failure to launch by Nicole. They really were going slow into that jump. And they had two different entries. He went in from an inside three, her from an outside three. That's very unusual.
takes it from that throw, triple salve, carrying so much speed. And he was so controlled as he launched her into the air. Yeah, and I also enjoyed the knee work of her edges afterwards. Nice choreography. It does seem that every single time this team steps on the ice, they get a little bit better. Yes, they do. like they're floating on that spin, doesn't it? I can tell you, my knees, my thighs wouldn't be floating <laughs> if I was doing that spin at the end of a program. Well, the Italians with some trouble with the jumps today. The score likely not as high as we have seen from them earlier in the season. Very close on the technical score if you look at your tracker with Kirsten and Michael. And then, of course, the technical panel gets to review everything in slow motion, which we don't get to see. And that's where marks are won and lost. Yeah, so that number could change. Yep. The scores for the Italians coming up next, along with the French team of Vanessa James and Morgan Cypress. Road to the Olympic Games is proudly presented by Toyota. Together, so much more. Welcome back to our coverage of the 2019 World Team Trophy competition on Road to the Olympic Games presented by Toyota. Uh, we wanted to first go to a CBC Sports update and Saturday was an historic day for Canadian golf. Brooke Henderson joined Brooke George Knudsen, Sandra Post, and Mike Weir Saturday in Hawaii because the 21-year-old Canadian sensation joined that elite list when she tied the national record for most wins on the pro circuit with her eighth LPGA title. It came at the Latte Championship where Henderson had won before. She saw, shot a two under par 70 on the final round to successfully defend her title. A notable victories include her win at the PGA Championships back in 2016, where she became the second youngest player in LPGA history to win a major. So congratulations to Brooke Henderson. And five Canadian wrestlers reached the podium Saturday at the Pan American Championships in Argentina. Hannah Taylor of Cornwall PEI won the lone silver medal for Canada at that competition. And in the men's event, Jasmine Polka also won bronze. The Canadian women won team silver. Now back to figure skating in Japan and the Italian team of Della Monica and Guarize have just finished their free skate and looking for some scores here, but there were a few problems, mainly with the jumps in their program. And you see there, 130.85, so that means that the Canadian team of Kirsten Moore Towers and Michael Marinero stay in the lead. I've noticed uh, skaters are a lot happier without their coaches in the Kiss and Cry. <laughs> not saying anything, Carol, it's just, you know. Uh, Let's go. Just a, Nobody's plotting their next move today. <laughs> you know, this I'm sure has been a difficult month, month and a half for Vanessa James and Morgan Cypress. This French team went to the World Championships in February as the team to beat. But if you remember, you mentioned it earlier, Kurt, during the warm up before the short, short program, Vanessa collided with Italy's Matteo Gorise, and she felt dizzy after that. And uh, they made some uncharacteristic mistakes in their programs, failed to make it onto the podium. Here in Japan, though, things have gone much smoother. James and Cypress placed second in the short program the other day. I don't think there's any quantifying the emotional stress that something like that on a warm up can cause going into probably what was the most important free skate of their career. Yeah, the definite potential to be world champions. And Absolutely. Morgan actually didn't do 
a triple. He turned it into a double because I'm convinced he was worried about his partner. Look at that beautiful element. So much power and her speed when she rotates. Definitely the top team in the world this season. Look at how easy they made that series of jumps look. If that would have happened in the short program, I think we'd be calling them world champions right now. But that's why we get together and have events. That's right. We don't know what's going to happen. Beautiful side-by-side -side triple south cows. Height, speed, and very, very close together, which is something you don't always see with the pair teams on the side-by-side -side jumps. That makes the quality even more spectacular. Very handy to have legs that are six feet long, <laughs> make the lifts, lifts look so beautiful. Direction change from Morgan. What a strong fellow. You mentioned before, Kurt, about how, you know, countries are thinking if we are strong in all the disciplines, we can have people on the podium at Olympics and at World Team Trophy. But the important thing is for young skaters coming up, make sure you're multidiscipline. It's now so difficult to get into any discipline later in the game. You need to have a little taste of everything when you're young. Do as much as you can. Do some dance, do some pairs, not just trapped in a box of singles. Because if it turns out that that's not your thing, very hard to break in now. The disciplines are so difficult. They are right on their game, and that's some great free advice from Coach Carroll there for parents, coaches, and kids alike. into the death spiral there with no preparation from Morgan, just an inside three turn and then having to hold that back outside edge, very, very difficult. here. <laughs> this French team was denied the title at the World Championships, but they certainly delivered on all their promise here at the World Team Trophy. He says, come on, I want more. <laughs> I think between their coach, John Zimmerman, and their choreographer for this program, Charlie White, Olympic ice dance champion, um, they did a fantastic job of creating a vehicle that showed off everything that is wonderful about these two. And uh, as we said, they really were the team to beat this year. It's a shame they're not world champions, but next year, guys. Uh, the score is for Vanessa James and Morgan Cypress on the other side of the break. And you can bet they're gonna be big scores, probably season's best scores. And it has been a breakthrough year for Natalia Zabiaco and Alexander Enbert landing on the world podium last month for the first time in their careers here in Japan. They put up some big numbers for Russia. Can they do it once again?
Well, Road to the Olympic Games presented by Toyota is back and we're waiting for the marks for the Grand Prix final champions for France, Vanessa James and Morgan Cypress. And you know, a lot of choreography, a lot of thought goes into these uh, kiss and cry areas <laughs> during the team <laughs> trophy competition. A lot of pride goes into the oh, kiss I and think cry so, yeah. activities. It's a competition all by itself. Just, uh, Who's got the best? Inspired by Team one. Canada today with my wardrobe. Yep. Kurt with the Canadian tuxedo. Well, pretty yeah. inspired by this skate as well. Uh, this is a bittersweet skate because that was wonderful to watch and it must have been so much fun to skate. And then as soon as the music ends, you think, what could Why have didn't been? I do what that before? could have been? And the, uh, with the collision before the short program. So, you know what? You just forge on and you try and stay healthy and you keep improving and you just, because um, this team deserves a world title. Oh, um, they do. But it doesn't mean it comes to you. You got to go get it. So. And they have such a, a complete collection of, of tricks. Um, their lifts are, I think, some of the most spectacular in yeah. the world. And I mean, he is such a wonderful partner. You you see a lot of the girl in, in the lifts, but you have to understand how difficult the boy's job is and that it, he, the girl can't the do anything. The too. responsibility is huge. I mean, look at this, just the sheer strength required to make that happen and stop on your knee with the girl still in the air. And turn while you're stuck. Like, that's all, it just, yes. it's exponential. But the speed in the last quarter, like the last minute and a half of that program, I kept noticing how they were covering the ice so well. Yeah, yeah enjoy screen. that, you deserve it. <laughs> Season's best score over 152. So the French move ahead of Canadians, Moore Towers. Marinero with just one team left to skate here. The quantum leap <laughs> over top <laughs> into first place. <laughs> so Natalia Zabiaco and Alexander Ember finally broke through on the world stage in a big way last month, winning the bronze medal at Worlds, the first world medal of their careers. And this Russian team was certainly on top of their game during the short program performance earlier in the week. They set a new season's best score and were the top pairs team earning that maximum 12 points for Russia. Stepping on the competitive ice and producing very consistent skates. Beating Vanessa and Morgan in the short program, just building on their confidence. Nice twirl twist coming your way. Watch the height. Side-by-side side jumps there, very controlled, very consistent. Back that up with another side-by-side side effort. A lot of single skating in pairs, isn't there? Oh, and then they make liars of us by doing doubles instead of triples. Thank you, guys. Actually, I think that was planned. Do you think so? I think so. There's a different kind of an energy that goes into a jump where you're planning no, for a no, triple. No, no, They planned a triple. Oh, the paper. The sheet right here. Maybe they changed their minds. Yep. They look like they both changed their mind at exactly the same time, so. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> you That's good. You stop arguing. <laughs> right. No, it's water cooler discussion. Go for it.
stopping the momentum of the turn and then immediately going on the other circle. That, that's, that's really well done. Beautiful highlight moment, use of the music. You could hear Natalia's blade land so securely on that throw. We've seen this program throughout the season. It does sometimes tend to drone on a little bit. And somehow today, at the end of the season, everyone's got a little bit extra gas in the tank. I'm sure they'd like to be, and maybe they'll be wishing that triple sale had been there. Might have gotten a little closer. Wouldn't matter. The World Bronze medalists, they're going to be in tough to pick up that maximum 12 points, and it's not that they skated so poorly, really. It's just that James and Cepra skated so darn well. Yeah, well, they, I, go ahead. No, I think they just skated with way more connection. I, I have to say I'm not buying the the program from these two. I, I haven't enjoyed it really for the season. They skate it very well, but I compared to how the French connect with the music and the choreography, to me, this is much more of a paint by numbers number. Yeah. They what, check all what, the boxes. What happened for me today is that they were so on is that it lasted longer. The Because I agree, I completely agree that right now they've got a collection of jewels as far as pair moves go yeah. and lifts and stuff. like They are really wonderful, great. Now that you've got that in your box, how are you going to decorate it and present it? So that's the next step in the evolution of, of them as a this pair team, team yeah. who are top three in the world. Um, now it's time to really find the right magical elixir of how to present it. But somehow today they skated so great that the program lasted longer for me. But I, I agree with you. The music, the music and the presentation is a little dull. It's very mechanical. Um, but boy, they're good. Yes, excellent. Excellent technicians. Now I'd like to see a little bit more, like what else have you got now that we've seen that? Picky, picky, picky. Right? No, but it's just evolution. It's, yeah. yeah, it's the next step for them. So Tops. say us, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Top score, uh, James Cephas, 152.52. Mm -hmm. Canadians sitting in second place right now. It's going to be a nice score for them. 141.32, so they're nowhere near close to the French, but do move ahead of the Canadians into second place. But to James Cephas, they run away with the title 11 points better than the Russians. Well, James and Cyprus really lit it up in the Paris event. More than 10 points separates the French from the reigning world bronze medalist. Uh, the leaders in the overall standings, the US, Japan, they finish near the bottom of the standings. And it was a good day for Canadians Moore Towers Marinero, who finished in third place. Our season was full of ups and downs, I think. We were a little disappointed with our performances at Worlds, so we were happy to have this opportunity to come back here and, and to better ourselves and to do it with our team and for our team and, and for ourselves. And I think we did that. That was a, a success this week, and we're looking forward to next season. Yes, How about it was, you? Uh, it was super yeah. fun to cap off the season uh, in the team format with the rest of Team Canada. Yeah! yeah. yeah. Okay, here's what the overall standings look like. The Americans increased their lead over Japan by a single point. Russia is making things interesting as it is now just five points back of Japan. The Canadians and French continue their battle for fourth. That big 12 points thanks to James and Cyprus moves France to within three points of Canada. And one more event to go here in Japan and it's the women's free. It's a strength of Japan and Russia, but with the Americans 13 point lead, that is going to be tough to catch. We'll be back in just a moment with the women.
Welcome back. Road to the Olympic Games on CBC brought to you by Toyota. World Team Trophy continues in Fukuoka. Beautiful spring in Japan. The cherry blossoms are out. The beautiful game is back on CBC Sports. We'll have streaming coverage of 20 games from the Canadian Premier League's inaugural season, including 10 on television. Seven teams from all over Canada competing throughout the summer and fall, culminating with the league championship in October. We kick off with the first game next weekend between Hamilton's Forge FC, Toronto's York 9 FC. That's Saturday, April 27th at 1 p.m. ET. For the full schedule, head to cbcsports.ca. Now back to figure skating with Brenda, Carol, and Kurt. Fukuoka is the site of this 2019 World Team Trophy competition. This event is held once every couple of years in Japan, a country which absolutely loves its figure skating. And our final event of the week is the women's competition, and here is how they finished after the short program the other day. The winner of each segment picks up 12 points, second place gets 11 points, uh, third place 10 points, and so on and so forth. Uh, Japan was a big winner, as you can see, with both Riko Kahara and Kaori Sakurai finishing in the top three. Now to the women's warm-up and Canada's top female skater here is this woman, Gabby Daleman, who finished seventh in the short. It's been a long season for Gabby. She's, you know, really... Oh. Oh. And there's one of those weird, weird collisions. Oh, my goodness. Holding her ribs there. She's getting up. Yeah. So tripped up with the French skater. Who just looked like she stepped out from the boards, maybe without looking. Knee, ribs. Okay, so we'll watch that carefully. Yeah. Here's American Brady Tanel, who had a great short program the other day, setting a new season's best score. Wow, <laughs> there's a Bambi moment. Uh, at <laughs> Looking at her coach. We got, a, oh. we got a smile out of Brady. <laughs> I she's, make well, my she's, mind she's looking over at her teammates, going, uh, I'll be right back. Yeah. With I'll just go reshopping and fix that. Oh, don't worry, kids. I got this. Couldn't make a choice. Um, yeah, so the five minute warm up is where you're so excited. You're really uber focused on what you're doing, and um, you know, things can happen. So when you expect a skater to land that jump, and if they actually take that ball and slide right in front of you, that's where bad things can happen. Okay. Here's Russia's Elizaveta Tuktumusheva, who got her team off to a great start in the short, picking up 11 points by finishing in second place. Elizaveta was left off the world team in favor of Yevgenia Medvedeva, who, um, you know, some medals at Olympics and... And medaled at Worlds. And medaled at Worlds. So, so who's so to say? But I mean, yep. I'm sure that Elizabeth has something to say about that <laughs> here at this event. Remind the Russian Federation who I am. And the exactly. Japanese team is led by a couple of teenagers. One of them, 16-year-old Rika Kahira, who finished first in the short. She's just, in her hap. Sorry, go ahead. Just trying to keep those boots going, looks like, for a little bit. Just oh, one yeah. more event. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to tape those boots together. Another uh, use for duct tape. Yeah. There is white duct tape out there, Rika. But um, <laughs> maybe, the, you know, it is the end of the season, and, and it's really not uncommon to see a skater with, with tape around their ankles, just trying to get to the uh, end of the season. But she loves the triple axle. That's oh, kind of her make or break jump, isn't it? And you can see, even on the warm-up yeah. of that section, all she was doing was axle. She was just trying to get <laughs> to the axle. All right. Well, Canada's other right skater there. in this women's event is Alain Chartrand, the reigning Canadian champion. And she has finished as high as 11th place at the World Championships, but last <laughs> month... Yeah, Nguyen has a mustache. Go ahead, as you were saying, sorry. <laughs> she was, uh, and I don't even know where I was. Anyway, she was disappointed to finish out of the top 20. Uh, she would love to finish the season now on a high note. I guarantee you that's her teammates screaming from the other end of the rink. Very different experience to skate in a team event. You would think you're on the ice alone, you do your thing and see what the score does and just add it up, but it, it changes how you feel, it changes how you act that week. And certainly the thoughts that are going through your mind, it can be a lot of fun or it can be nerve wracking. Little smile, but that wasn't the combination she was looking for. Nice triple lutz opened up on what I believe was a planned triple toe.
looking again on the triple toe as if it was a little bit under-rotated. The technical panel gets to review all of those elements in slow motion at the end of the program. And um, if you keep under-rotating things, it can make such a big difference to your score. It just eats away at your base value. As well as your GOE, which yep. is the grade of execution, which is really bonus mark on each event, I mean each element. Nice little cluster of turns there. achieving the rotation on the triple loop, so the blade just stopping dead and causing the fall as she comes out. Alan is in the last three jumping passes of her program. Those, those last three passes all get a 10% bonus, so disappointing to not be able to hit the triple lutz, especially in that bonus zone. And when you are looking for your timing instead of just feeling it, this is the kind of you know, evaporation of your natural instincts that can happen in competition, where the jumps just seem a million miles away instead of right at your fingertips where you had them in the warm-up. Atlanta's experienced many highs and lows this season. The high of winning that second Canadian title in January and then the low of placing out of the top 20 at Worlds. Now this season, this chapter now closed and I'm sure she looks forward to the off season when she can start anew. Well, she, every, go ahead. Sorry, every skater will look back on their season and think about what went right and what went wrong and then they'll work with their coaches and mental training coaches and to figure out how to get past that. It's not an easy thing to do. I would say with Elena, it's not physical because she is quite an athlete. She's so strong. And when she is on her game, she zips down the ice and just yep. flings herself through the sky and lands beautiful jumps. So you have to do question a season like this where she does have the peaks and valleys and you really want a more consistent journey through your season. And we've seen her so many times in, in competition practices do clean run-throughs yeah. of the program and then just not be able to reproduce it when it matters. So I think you're absolutely right. It's more of a mental than a physical thing for Elaine. <laughs> She's not looking forward to this, I can tell. This isn't going to be quite what I had planned. Oh. 
Gregor Filipowski to her right, one of her coaches, and he and I competed against each other and shared the world podium together. Good memories when I see him. On the ice, representing Canada, Gabriel Dillman. As we saw earlier in the warm up, Gabby Dillman took a tumble in the warm up, and that can be obviously very unnerving for any skater. And she took part of this season off to deal with health issues, came back, finished 11th at Worlds. And she will spend the off season searching for ways, I'm sure, to get back to the form which saw her win a world medal just a couple of seasons ago. That was a really hard fall on the warm up and unexpected. She didn't have any chance to get her hands down to save herself, so bumped herself in multiple spots. Hard to recover from. in the air, you can see the free leg on that triple Lutz kind of flailing out. You want a nice, tight silhouette. Uh, so she did very well to only do what we call a step out instead of a full landing. Focused, but also moving across the ice with lots of speed. A little recovery on that double axle, but kind of assessing the situation, and I'm sure she's doing the same thing after the collision. Well, after a bump like that, adrenaline takes over and kind of helps to carry you through, but then you do something in the program, maybe a spin, and you that's when you start to realize you've actually hurt yourself more, more or less. There's so much movement required in these programs, in the step sequence, the body lines have to change all the time. going, come on, Gabby, we're behind you. Not going to be an easy skate today, is it? Oh, very gutsy to go for another triple lutz, but there's obviously problems. This is not a typical Gabby skate at all. Sigh of relief as that was the last jumping pass in the program. Crowd behind her, they know. parts of this program. Me Those too. <laughs> four jumps back to back. The first time I saw that in practice, I my jaw drop. Gutsy performance from Dalman today, no doubt. Well, certainly okay. a valiant effort after that collision. She looks to be smarting there. 
All things considered, good job by Gabby Delman. Mike Marinero has a baseball bat and he's pounding on the stands. <laughs> Is that what it was? That's what that was. <laughs> well, if she didn't have bad luck, she'd have no luck at all. Is that the saying? And this yep. whole last yep. few seasons has been a journey. The book is going to be an interesting read when she decides to write it. Oh, boy. She started off, uh, well, not with her signature triple toe, triple toe, but with a triple lutz. Yeah. Um, which is upping her difficulty at the last event of the year, which is, again, gutsy move from Gabby. It's just not your typical skate, whatever. It really no. is just a mental gauntlet of trying to you know, decide where your headspace is, how will my body react? Like you said, Carol, you just yeah. don't know until you get out there and no. give it a try. There's Mike with the baseball bat, <laughs> top right hand corner. Oh. Feel for you, Gabby. Lee Barkel in the kissing cry with her. Thanking the fans there. All the skaters say it's so much fun to skate over there. Oh, yeah. 107.48 for the serve for the moment into fourth place. Sofia Samodorova was the surprise European champion this year who had a pretty incredible season. The 16-year-old is a first-year senior, was eighth at last month's World Championships, but in the short program here in Japan, she did make some mistakes and wound up in sixth place. Well, being in the Russian ladies' competition is a bit like being in a piranha tank when you think that the first three at Russian <laughs> nationals this year, none of them were old enough yeah. to even go to the World Championships. Yeah, they all beat the Olympic champion. That's right, and Sofia and is only 16 herself. <laughs> So I think her secret element to success is how she unravels from the rotation into the landing. She just has a very unique way of what we call checking the rotation, stopping the rotation. She's very compact in the air. No space between her arms and her body. Legs nice and straight and really well crossed. I think that helps her tremendously to, as you say, check out of the jump so nicely. No wasted No extra motion. torque. support from the fans. Just love skating. Starting her last three jumping passes now, looking for those bonus marks.
they aren't big jumps. She doesn't carry as much speed, but they are so, as you, compact was the right word, Carol. They're just so crisp and clean. Waiting for a last jump before the face comes to life. Yeah. <laughs> I was waiting for that the whole time. Very stoic early wow. on. There is a level of concentration in oh, her my. face. The body moves, the, she's moving to the music, but there's so much concentration in the face that it kind of tells the judges, this is work for me. Doesn't quite finish the package, but she'll get there. Last minute's like an exhibition number, isn't it? <laughs> well, the European champion, certainly with a technically brilliant free skate. <laughs> it's fun. It's entertaining. Yeah, it it's... really is. And beautifully skated. Yeah. She didn't miss a trick. Fast, clean, exciting elements, well choreographed. Really nice job. Sophia, Sophia's score is coming up. Well, this woman, Brady Tunnell, helped the Americans to a bronze medal in the team competition at last year's Olympic Games. She also helped them here in the short, picking up nine points. Can she contribute big again? We'll find out next when Road to the Olympic Games continues. CBC Sports has all the latest stories and analysis on the web and the app. This week, Dutch-Canadian speed skater Evert van Bentham has written a player's own voice piece about a legendary race in Friesland, the Netherlands. Started in the 1750s, if the winters are cold enough, the canals freeze and skaters race 200 kilometers in an 11-city circuit from town to town. Incredibly, Von Bentham won it twice and became a hero to everyone in Holland. But the sad part is, the centuries-old tradition is losing to climate change. It's been 22 years since the last time it was cold enough to hold the race. Imagine if Stanley Cups went on hold for that long. We continue our coverage now of the 2019 World Team Trophy presented by Toyota. And we just watched Russia's Sofia Samodarova's free skate. And that got a thumbs up from the two people sitting beside me. What did you like about it? Everything, actually. Yeah, it's a very pleasant skate to watch. I, yeah. I'm really, again, it's fun to see a skater at this stage knowing that they're just going to get better. Yes, exactly. Nearly 140 points, and that puts Sophia into first place. Let's see And Team Russia is now in second place. After a very rough short program at the World Championships, the woman on the ice right now, Brady Tanel, redeemed herself here in Japan. She set a new season's best score in the short. Brady and did the first portion of the competition in fourth place, earning the American team nine points. And the 21-year-old already has team hardware in her drawer at home. She was a member of the American team that finished third at last year's Winter Olympics. for Brady to prove that the warm-up is simply just that, a warm-up, because from what we saw, she was not on her game. A nice simple double axle to get back on top of that edge. 
She's a young skater who seems to have very quickly got a bit of ownership in her skating. Sense of self out on the ice. We watched her on practice at Olympics in Pyeongchang and she was so impressive with her calm demeanor and the way she just went about her business. Jumps always very, very clean. Then she went through a little period of under rotations, but now she seems to be back on track. Everything nice and clean again. Beautiful spin, her long legs making that extension really gorgeous. When I met her, that's what I said. I was like, you are taller than expected. She goes, you're the 147th person to say that. <laughs> She's a very elegant skater. She uses those long legs and arms to great effect. All her movement is very purposed. There's no flailing. Everything has intention, which is the mark of someone who's really paid attention to their choreography and design of their program. Side edge and at the last second flipping it over to the outside edge creating a Lutz and not a flip. More points. <laughs> Carrying that momentum across the ice on that triple loop. She is precise, Carol. You're right in every way. strong choreographic moment. It's been with the leg tucked in behind the free leg. You don't very often no. see that one. And how quickly she got oh, into wow. that position. Okay, that GOE is not high enough nope. for that spin. I'm sorry, I'm going to complain. I was looking at it too. <laughs> Brady Tunnell, yeah, made me a believer. Yep. That was awesome. Now that's how you want to end your season. Oh, yeah. And start it next year. Yeah. <laughs> and just continue. I'll just keep doing that. Yeah. She hits a home run here in Japan, that's for sure. I'm going to go back to that spin. That's the whole reason the GOE was supposed to go up to plus five. The things like that. And she should have got plus five across the board for that spin. That was amazing. Very clean choreography, and, and yet I felt like, and, and it can get lost in all the jumps and spins and the, you know, how difficult the program can be. But when she had those high, that beautiful extension on the back, it's not really a spiral, it's more like just a back, ex, an outside edge extension, and then flipped it back and around and then down in that frozen position oh, with her hand on the ice. I just, truly my, beautiful. my interest went way up and yep. then she kept that interest all the way through to the end. And it was the perfect point in the program too, the break in the action yep. to get you interested again, as you say. 
So the right choreography on the right skater. Yeah. USA. US team cheering her on. I want to see that spin again. Where's that spin? <laughs> I'm going to go home and Google that. So many nice moments. Split jumps again. Beautiful. So you think we're looking at a season's best score? Well, that would be a nice way to finish. It would be. <laughs> Just yelled Team USA loves <laughs> Japan. <laughs> She's got it, over 150 points. So we have a new leader here in the women's team competition. Oh, that was easy. I got more where that came from. Big score, that's awesome. Well, the Japanese women are be counted on heavily in this team competition. Riku Kamaru and Kaori Sakamoto, who's on the ice now, should be able to put up some big points here. Gahira finished uh, in first place in the short, picked up 12 points. Sakamoto, 10 points for finishing in third. So that's a, a total of 22 points between the two of them from the short. Sakamoto set. A new personal best score in the short the other day, and we'll probably need another one here to finish in first place. She was so disappointed at the World Championships. One mistake in the long program was enough to keep her off the podium in what was otherwise a beautiful skate. skate. Absolutely gorgeous. Like a modern version of Midori Ito. A little bit tight in the air of that triple flip. judges on the landing of that south cow straight into the little back crossovers or little back cross rolls I should say a little sweet choreographic technical moment combined it's like Kiori's come back to life in the last 30 or 40 seconds
like she's skating downhill. Sakamoto closes out strong, but is it going to be enough to catch the leader at the moment, Sofia Sada Dorova? If we were just marking the last minute, yeah. maybe, yeah. maybe, just the beginning wasn't the quite problem is strong enough. She created magic from, oh. from stumbling, and then yeah. she brought it back to life. Well, just two skaters left to go. One of them, Elizaveta took to Musheva, a woman who won't surrender to the younger crop of Russian skaters. And 16-year-old who took the skating world by storm this season, Riko Kahira, first in the short and looking to score big for the Japanese today. Road to the Olympic Games is proudly presented by Toyota. Together, so much more. Well, still a couple of skaters left to go in this women's competition at the World Team Trophy and a party going on in the Japanese Kiss and Cry. They're excited to see the scores for Kaori Sakamoto's free skate, which was pretty nice. I want to do a little bit of cut and paste and, and put the last minute over the first minute so that she can so have that she that agrees skate with all you. the way through. Yeah. She's so fast. I feel like she could have done well in that race that they have in the Netherlands when yeah. they have to go 200 kilometers. Um, and she's so, so sweet on the ice. Um, she, her personality just comes through in everything she does. The simplistic choreography that she has, um, but it's, it comes across so clean. Yes. This and she flies. Honestly, and she flies. She flies. You, you really don't even see yeah. it as much on the screen, but my goodness, she's that fast. That section of, at the end where she's doing those spirals across oh. the ice and then swooping around the corner into that triple loop, could you hear the crowd react? Yeah. Because that's good placement and timing in the program. But she has this integrity and honesty about her that is so adorable, and you just can't help but get involved. No, you just fall in love with you her. You fall in love. She, she just takes you with her. You don't even have to think about it. You're right there as soon as she starts. I could see that spiral longer, just saying. I, every time she does it, I, I want know. that spiral to just be a little two seconds, please. She just gets started and then. And it's not enough. We want to see more. Take it right round in the circle next time. <laughs> And the crowd was so quiet just before the end, and she was in the spin, and then suddenly they just went nuts, and she went nuts right along with them. It was awesome. So, the score to beat so right great. now is 150.83. <laughs> Brady Tunnell's in the lead. <laughs> Survey says. <laughs> Season's best score. <laughs> Well, that puts her into second place, so the American still in first. Calgary in second place with two skaters left to come. Brady did her job today. She did. Second place. And Team Japan is now in second place. Well, you just cannot keep our next skater down. She's been kicked to the curb more than a few times by the Russian Federation, but just keeps bouncing back, doesn't she? She's the skating version of Kill Bill. <laughs> Elizabeth <laughs> took to Musheva. Uh, certainly, you just have to look at the most recent Worlds, for example. Despite not finishing on the, despite finishing on the podium at the Grand Prix final, she was not chosen to represent Russia at the World Championships. Overlooked by younger, up-and-coming skaters. During the short here in Japan, she showed the Russian Federation what they're missing. She beat her season's best score and picked up 11 of a possible 12 points. Another day, another night got me thinking. 
ice skating movie star. The only Russian lady to do triple axel, I believe. Here it comes. Look at the pop on that. Straight up. Take that, Russian Federation. <laughs> Pretty much. Can't win it with just one jump. Doesn't matter which jump. Triple Lutz, triple toe. Little snow flying on the toe pick of the landing of the second jump. But you'd never see it on her face. She's always on. Four jumping passes back to back, getting the heavy lifting out of the way early on. Nicely done. Nice holding that position long enough to get a nice look at it. The uh, demands of the judging make it difficult for any skater to hold anything very long. They have to get to the next element. But if you do eight revolutions in the spin, that's a bullet point for you. So that's what she was going for, I do suspect. Yes. Keep your eye on that technical tracker. You can see she's done five elements and she's already at well, least halfway to the top score. Four jumping passes will yeah, do that for that you, will. especially when you land them like she did. And included triple, triple, and the triple axe. And the triple axe. Just because. Lining up for a double axle combination. Ooh, a little fight. You can see that grade of execution bounce around the computer, acknowledging that different judges are bringing in their marks at different times. And even at the end of the program, they can take another look at it and slow and decide to change their mind again. I love the way she doesn't telegraph any of her jumps. They just come out of nowhere. No real huge setup and waiting. They're just done. Signature move. She could be well on her way to winning. This long program, the short and the long program are not connected in this event. Remind everybody, a short program is simply on its own. You get your points for your team, you move on, start new. And I think she could just have given Russia 12 points. And also she's the queen of media too. Check oh, out her yes. Instagram, etc. <laughs> Unapologetically, Elisabetta. I'm done. <laughs> Take that. Well, the old girl still has it. <laughs> okay, she's 22, but old in this game. Elizaveta Tuktamusheva lights this arena up. Yeah, soak it in. You deserve it. Triple axel takeoff is not typical. It's not all arms and momentum. No. It just seems to get down in the knee and then just like a spring, it just goes straight up. It's very non-typical. Like everything else about her, hey, really. <laughs> bingo, here we come. Look how quiet the arms are. She doesn't even bring them back and swing them through. They are still. So one thing, you don't get as much momentum, but they don't cause problems either. They go straight in. So that makes her takeoff very consistent. Uh, but truly, I don't know how she does it. If I, don't, I would feel stuck. It's very unique to her. It's well, obviously a, a system she's developed with her coach, Alexi Mishin, that works for her. 
If it ain't broke, don't fix it. The face is always alive. She doesn't carry as much speed across the ice as, as a lot of the other skaters do, but she sure carries a show everywhere she goes. She kind of reminds me of Katarina Witt a little tiny bit, the way she has so much more to offer than just the elements. Little fist pumps, just looking like she's having fun. Huh? <laughs> I think, Brenda, if you skated, you'd skate like her. That's what I think. <laughs> That's a compliment. I can see I that. Like, I can see that. Channeling Brenda. Channeling Brenda. <laughs> her inner Irving. <laughs> Great job from Elisabetta. Way to end the show. Yep. Well, the leader at the moment, Brady Tunnell. There's Alexia Mission. Yeah. Rumor is she's the first... Um, lady he ever coached. Yeah. That's the rumor. Good choice. Yeah. New leader. Season's best score, nearly 154 points with one skater left to come in this competition. She needed it to beat Brady. In this Just corner. to get your arms tired, I'll hold it up for you. <laughs> Final skater of the day, Rika Kahira, who was many people's pink to win the world type title last month. But the 16-year-old wasn't at her best, wound up in fourth place just off the podium. But this, as you can see, has been a phenomenal season for her. Some of the things that she's done over the course of the past six months. Now, Rika rebounded with a great short program the other day, breaking her own world record score to finish first, giving Japan those all important 12 points. And you might think after the triple axel, triple S, triple toe, and all the showmanship and that big score that, you know, first place is wrapped up, but um, if there's anybody Anybody that can duct type their skates and get out there and do it, it is this skater right here. And we saw her at Worlds when she missed the triple axel at the end of the program. She went straight in and tried to do it the takeoff again. She was already focused on that jump. If not over focused. Yeah. Who knows? Well, the good news is the duct tape does match the dress, so. Let's hope it holds her together because big triple axel, she's got an exciting one too. She attacks, here we go. Loose in the air, you could see she wasn't tight. Short on the rotation and an unfortunate fall. Doubled Axel in combination with triple toe. She is known to have put two triple axles in the lung, so she had the potential. about trying a second one today. The first one not going as she wanted. It's a great risk to take. Great reward if you do it. I have seen her do four in a row. Yeah. In practice. But somehow doing just that one in the program is a completely different story. Trust me, I know what you're talking about. <laughs>
looked like she wasn't quite patient enough on the triple toe in the second half of that combination. Didn't achieve the rotations, and when you're short on rotations, it's hard to get the landing out. Very hard. Struggling there in a the flip. I mentioned the tape because it it is something that we haven't seen on her before. I don't believe that she's taped her skates before. And when you tape them, it does give you more support. But honestly, it does change the timing of your takeoffs as well. So if it's something that she's doing without getting used to it, it, it may can have change. Only just happened. Yeah, it you, can change your timing. You can put your skates on one day, they feel perfectly fine in the morning and in the afternoon. Oh, they're gone. They're kind of gone. It's a yeah. it's a combination of how you feel and how they actually are. Yeah. And it plays with your mind. And once you've decided they're not right, then they're not right. <laughs> you're, you're correct. Well, we could, could not give the Japanese fans what they wanted today. She won't be able to win, but where she places Curtin Carroll could mean the difference between silver and bronze for her team. The Japanese cannot catch the U.S., but the Russians can catch the Japanese in the team standings. Nail biter right to the finish. Yeah, as it should be. Yeah. It's exciting. No. But I, I will remind everyone, it, it doesn't seem like a team event, except for the kiss and cry. But it, <laughs> it is, because it's on your mind. Here comes that axle takeoff. And you could see the rotation wasn't consistent in the air. It was almost like start, stop, start, stop. Mm. Just a little staggered in that, and that really plays with your head in the air. You're thinking, ah, this doesn't feel right. This isn't the way to Grandma's house. I don't remember how to get there. And uh, down you go. <laughs> And actually hard when you've done triple axel to come back and do double axel immediately afterwards, which was which is what she did. Like quad toe and then triple toe, it's a very different jump. Adding that extra rotation. Yeah. She's another skater though that even as they skate out from the boards, they have you. You yeah. you look at her, she's engaging, she doesn't lose the sight of the fact that the audience and the judges yeah. and people watching on TV are involved in her performance. I would say, generally speaking, the single skaters from Japan, they just have such a kind of a, an integrity and an honesty in how they perform to their music. It's not just a display of technical elements. They seem to all very humbly put something of their heart into their skating. Absolutely, and that's a really good way of putting it. Really enjoyable to watch. And she's only 16. There's a lot of career still ahead for her. And with that triple axel, she's always going to be a always threat. Always a threat, yep. Always. So the situation right. is that uh, Rika cannot finish lower than seventh place. Otherwise, the Russians will move ahead of the Japanese. Oh. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> a little bit. Just a tad too, just a tad too big for her. I like the parasol, Tim Kalito. Parasol. Fifth place. All right. So that is enough to keep the Japanese on the podium here in this team trophy competition. And Team Japan is in second place. Those top two skates today were absolutely spectacular. If Tuk Tumishida yeah. hadn't had the triple axel, I think it would have been much closer between the two of them. It, 
would have been very close. Yes, yeah, I think mathematically, that was actually yeah. the separating factor. So, Elizaveta with one heck of a competition. She was second in the short, wins the free. That's 23 points alone for her for Team Russia. Brady Tanell saves the day for the Americans, finishing in second place. If you look at the standings, the Russians, Americans, and Japanese occupy the top six spots. And in the overall standings, the Americans easily cruise to their fourth team trophy title. That's the fourth time they've taken gold in the six times this event has been contested. The Japanese finished this year's second, just two points ahead of Russia. And here's what America's top male and female skiers had to say. Great way to end our season here. Um, it's our first team event and uh, it was a beautiful experience. The Japanese crowd is absolutely so supportive and um, great way to end the year. I'm really happy about it, but of course, as Madison was saying, you know, this is a team event. This is, you know, the result of all our team's hard work. So, you know, I'm really proud of every member of, of this team and, you know, I'm really happy that we were able to, to stand on top of the podium today. And for the Canadians, a fifth place finish. They were overtaken by the French who put out stronger performances in the women's event today. A tough way for Gabby Dalman and Alain Chantron to finish the season. Overall, you know, I wouldn't be where I am today without this amazing team in Skate Canada. These guys supported me, helped me through my entire program, and without them, I would not be able to do what I did today. So I am so thankful and honored and proud to not only represent Canada, but be on this amazing team with these guys. Yeah. Yeah. And coming up next on CBC Sports Women's Rugby, this week's seven stop is in Japan. I'm Brenda Irving for Kurt Browning and Carolina. The rest of the crew, we hope you enjoyed the 2018-19 figure skating season. Goodbye for now. <laughs>